Hi guys, my name is Anna. I am a 29 year old mechanical engineering student and today we're gonna to be talking about self care. When I first started my college career, I thought that, oh, self care was, I don't know, taking a long bath, uh, going shopping, <laughs> you know? That's not, that's not, that's not, <laughs> that's not what I think anymore. I feel like when you're a working adult student, <laughs> your self-care is basically just like basic needs. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about. So throughout the years, I've learned specifically what I need to do to help me through a successful and beautiful, wonderful semester. Now towards the end, I am almost burnt out um, if you saw my last video, I tell you specifically what I do towards the end of the semester. When I am completely at zero, I have given everything and I'm about to give up. <laughs> yeah, go watch it. It's great. Um, let's go ahead and get started with self-care. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be so basic and it is nothing. <laughs> okay, let's do it. First things first. I should go grab my list. All right, let's start with self-care tip number one. As a working adult, I do not have time to cook every single day of my life. I have time, specific amount of hours to cook for the rest of the week. Now, and that's if I'm meal prepping for myself. You know, usually my partner does a really good job that when I'm in school, he will cook every single meal, which I love, you know? But when he doesn't have time to do it, I have to make sure I have time to do it. But not only that, I have to make sure I'm eating right. So you have to make sure you're eating right. You know, the food you're gonna eat is gonna give you energy throughout the day. It's gonna give you energy to um, complete the tasks you need to complete. It being, you know, class, studying, note taking, homework. You need to feed your brain so it has enough energy to get through the day. Also, I work during the day too, so I need tons of energy. So I need to make sure I'm eating every single meal and I'm snacking in between as well. Because it's so easy when you're busy, I don't know if this happens to you, but when you're busy, it's so easy to forget to eat and just keep going and going and going. And then you're halfway through your day and you're completely miserable. <laughs> Ugh. So you don't want that to happen to you. So what I like to do is I will make sure I meal prep in advance, you know, um, and also when I order, like when I, I don't go grocery shopping anymore, I don't have time to grocery shop. What I do is I just order my, um, all of my groceries online and I pick up. That saves me like an extra hour and a half to two hours of shopping. You know, and that is big because I take that time and meal prep. So you need to make sure you're eating right. Self-care tip number one, make sure you're eating every meal. Specifically, make sure that you are eating. I know it's like a basic tip, but it's so easy to forget, you know? Tip number two, you have to work out. There's no way around it. There is no way that you are doing all of this, trying to accomplish you know, a 4.0, trying to accomplish, you know, good work at your work and you're not working out. That just makes no sense. Okay. You have all this pent up stress, all this pent up anxiety, and maybe some other feelings <laughs> that you need to work out through. So literally you have to start a workout schedule, even if it's just 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. I like to do 45 minutes a day. So when I first started working out, I started once a week and then I realized, hey, you need to work out more because you are way too stressed out and way too anxious. So let's go ahead and work out. So I started at another day and another day and now it's like, oh, you work out four days a week. Not because I want to look good, because I want to feel good, you know? I have all these emotions and they're all rushing at me and it just kind of helps me have a better mindset. I like to do a 30 minutes of yoga first and then 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of a hardcore, you know, quick workout. And that is how I do it. <laughs> It'll just give you a better mindset about everything, like literally about everything. You know, you'd be happy to do math homework. You'd be happy to read your history book, whatever you're doing. 
whatever classes you're taking. <laughs> okay, tip number three, you guys, you have to make sure you're maintaining a clean home. Part of self-care is making sure your space is clean. So the way, there's weird sounds going on, I get it. <laughs> the way I do that is that um, every night I do 10 minutes bef like towards the end of my day when I kind of finished everything. What I like to do is, okay, it's time to take care of you. I say to myself, it's time to take care of yourself. Clean your home for 10 minutes. So I just pick up, you know, put dishes away, um, fold a little bit of laundry. But the most important part for me is to make sure that my home is picked up because <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I have stopped studying, I've stopped doing homework, I've stopped like taking notes because I, for the life of me, cannot focus because my home is not in order. That just gives me like even more stress and even more anxiety. Um, but usually when I'm in school, my partner does a good job of just kind of, you know, keeping it clean. But when I see that he's like a little more busy, then I'll like take some time. But keep a clean home. That's part of self-care. Tip number four, reading. I know you have a lot of reading to do, you know. You have all these classes you're reading for, but I think that it's also important to feed, feed your mind and your soul with something that you actually want to read. So reading, I keep a book in my car. I keep a book in my purse. I practically have a book in every single space in my room. So when I have time, all I can do have to do is grab it and read, you know? Books that I am currently loving. Okay, this is also my all-time favorite. It's called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Okay, this book, if you haven't read this book, I mean, this book has been loved. When I tell you, my brother introduced me to this book. And when I tell you that, I, I mean, it's just like, I mean, like, who am I? Like, I write little notes on it, you know, I'm, I've highlighted so many things. I've, you know, I just have, I've given a lot of love in this book and every semester I try to read it at least once. Really good book. Next is this, it's called We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamda Gozi Adichie. I wanna say that's how you say it, pronounce it, but I'm not too sure. It's, you know, based off one of her TED Talks, it is really short book. I mean, this book, how many pages does this book have? No more than 50 pages. Okay, 52 pages. But honestly, it's such a good book. You know, my whole, I grew up in a family, mostly just women. So we're, we are feminists, you know? Okay. Oh, this book. Okay, this book, all of these books, most of these books. Okay, these last two books I found at a thrift store. And then I'll stop talking about books. This is called Uncle's. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. And it is a book about a, a slave, a slavery story. And I think um, when you first start reading it, you are like a little confused by the vocabulary because it is the, how it's written. It's very like during that time. And um, it can be a little confusing, but I mean, I'm taking my time on this book and it is such a good book so far and it's small and it fits anywhere. So this is the book that I currently have in my living room. These two books I have in my dining room. And then this is the book I have in my bedroom and it's called Born for Liberty, A History of Women in America by Sarah M. Evans. I It's a little loved and I started reading it as well this is the one I have you know on my nightstand and I think it's just important to get to know a little bit of you know womanhood where women started off where they you know the circumstances situations that happened in order to make sure that women were progressive throughout the century and this is just a really good book as well so reading <sighs> I feel like that's important for me. That's the type of self-care because I want to read something that I'm really, really, really interested in, but also that I can get something from, you know? Okay, my last tip, my fifth tip for self-care is 
burnout recovery hours. So when I get burnt out, I get burnt out really easily and really quickly, okay? And I don't have the luxury of having a weekend off. I don't have a luxury of having even a whole day off to make sure that I can take care of myself and kind of regroup. But also the type of burnout that I go through is more of a, a day's not gonna fix it kind of burnout. You know, it's long, long, like I need at least a month <laughs> to feel better. If that, you know, I kind of tend to recover from burnout differently and in different times. It takes me a while sometimes. Um, but I feel like this burnout recovery hours that I do help me just kind of stay sane and not give up on myself. <laughs> So what I like to do is on weeks that I have taken a test, because usually after test days, you, for that class, you don't have much to do. You know, the test is over, there's no homework. You can start reading like the next chapter if you want, but you don't have to. Like there's that little gap where you actually have time to kind of recover from, you know, however many weeks or months that you've been going through um, school. So you have that time to recover. So I take advantage of that time. You know, I can't, again, I can't help do like a whole day of just burnout recovery that just makes, I just don't have time for that. I still have a job that I need to go to and other classes that I need to work on. So what I like to do is after test days, test week, I will pick a specific day and that's usually like, like a Saturday or Sunday or even like a Friday where I give myself, you know, a specific amount of time to just kind of enjoy life again. <laughs> and usually I do that. Um, I have to make sure I give myself at least two to four hours to take advantage of that because that's specifically only the amount of time that I have to give. Um, and during that time, what I like to do is well, what I used to do is have family dinner and I would invite my family over and just cook a meal, you know, and then just eat and talk and recover. But now because of the pandemic, I can't do the things I love to do like outside, you know, and that is totally okay because I know that I'm responsible like for my own self, my own health, but also I'm responsible for, for other people's health. What I am doing is I'm being at home with my partner <laughs> and we will play like little games like Jenga or Bago or Uno, or we'll talk, make a meal together, you know, um, watch a movie together, play with my cat. I think that those specific hours, I know it sounds like, oh, two hours to recover from burnout, that's ridiculous. I'm not trying to fully recover from burnout. I am trying to just feel okay with being burnt out. I'm not trying to recover. I'm saying to myself, okay, you're burnt out, but let's do something for yourself because you have been working so hard lately. You just went through all of this. Let's make sure that you are okay, you know, because for the rest of the time, I'm not even thinking about myself. I'm thinking about how I have to work, all these due dates, all this stuff I have to do, and it's overwhelming, it's stressing me out, so that's what I do. You guys, I hope these tips help, and I, these are realistic tips, you know, these are my realistic tips. I'm an adult woman, I know what I want, I know what I need, and this is it. This is self-care for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and like, subscribe, especially just share this video. And let's start a small community of just wonderful people who are trying to work through a goal that is so difficult. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Bye.